There is no cure for HHD at the moment, although the foundation is working on this and so are many of the physicians involved in the field. But treatment involves identifying or screening for vascular malformations and removing them either through procedures or surgery. If a young child, even as young as a year of age or younger, has a vascular malformation in their brain, we will go in and, and repair that because of the risk of um, bleeding. If a child has frequent nosebleeds, um, we have several that become anemic because of their nosebleeds bleeds, we can intervene. And some newer medications are coming on the market that can help stabilize the vascular problem. So one of them is called Bevacizumab. Its common name is Avastin. Um, we have used that here at St. Louis University to inject the nasal septum with this medication to stop the nosebleeds. Um, we've had very good success with this particular technique. The long-term management of HHT is mostly focused on identifying potential problems. Uh, many patients don't have vascular malformations in their lungs and their brain, and if that's the case, they will do very well. Um, but if they do have one and it goes unrecognized or undiagnosed, that's a potential problem, um, and it's better off to eradicate the problem before it develops. The quality of life issue in HHT is important, but less so for children. The thing that really interferes with most adults who have HHT is the ongoing daily nosebleeds and the anemia that develops because of that. Some patients will get a blood transfusion every other Friday, and they'll alternate that with an iron infusion on the alternate Fridays because they become so anemic from the chronic nosebleeds. It's entirely possible that somebody has recognized they're anemic and they have um, chronic nosebleeds. They may or may not yet have or carry a diagnosis of HHD, but that won't stop most physicians from giving them blood transfusions or putting them in iron. So uh, sometimes it's a recognition thing. In other words, a lot of physicians remember learning about Osler Weber Rondu disease in medical school, and they think of it as a one in a million disease but it's not in the forefront of their mind when they're seeing most patients. And so it gets neglected. If you make the diagnosis early enough and you can manage the nosebleeds, you can probably avoid the chronic blood transfusions and the iron. However, many patients also have bleeding from their gastrointestinal tract, from their intestines and their, uh, their large bowel. And that is a difficult thing to stop. You know, if you have a nosebleed, you can hold pressure pretty easily. If your intestines are bleeding, there's no easy way to do that. And so there are ongoing studies looking at different types of medications to actually help regress the regression of these vascular malformations. Mm -hmm.